I will give instructions on breathing. It's so important. The first exercise is uh, in out. It means uh, breathing in. I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out. I know that I'm breathing out. This is a very important practice. When you breathe in, you know that uh, this is your in-breath and not your out-breath. You identify your in-breath as in-breath. And when you breathe out, you know that this is your out-breath. Only that. But it is a very important uh, practice. This is the first exercise on breathing that the Buddha gives to us. When we practice like that, something wonderful happens. Since we pay attention only to our in-breath and out-breath, and identify them as in-breath and out-breath, we stop the thinking. And this is a, a miracle already, because in our daily life we think too much. And because we think too much, uh, we are not uh, truly ourselves. Our body may be here, but our mind may be elsewhere. In the past, in the future, uh, in China. And therefore, when you breathe in and out, and become aware of your in-breath and out-breath, you stop the thinking, and you begin to be where your body is. Our body and our mind are very often separated from each other. And in between, we have our breath. And the moment when we uh, hold to our breathing and breathe in and out consciously, breathing in, I calm my body, breathing out, I smile, our body and our mind will become one. And if we practice breathing in and out with some concentration. We attain what we call um, the oneness of body and mind. The oneness of body and mind. Your mind and your body are reunified. And you begin to be there, truly yourself. And this is the first fruit of your practice. And it needs you to breathe in and out consciously, being aware of your in-breath and your out-breath. When you are not there, when you are not really there, you cannot see things very clearly and deeply. You miss everything. Everything seems to you not clear, vague. And therefore, in order to make ourselves available to our beloved ones, they should be there. And we are there by breathing in and out, breathing in, breathing out, and practicing like that for one time, two times, and begin to be to be alive, to be present. And that is the practice of mindfulness. Mindfulness means uh, to be aware, to be aware of what is going on. Your child is coming, and she wants some attention, some uh, affection. You know that, so you smile to her. You might open your arms, and hug her. And the basic condition is that you are there. So breathing in and breathing out is to be really there and to be available. Available to whom? Available to your beloved ones. And also to be ready to encounter life because life can be found only in the present moment. Let us think a little bit. The blue sky, the beautiful blue sky. When can you get in touch with uh, the blue sky? 
the present moment. In order not to miss the blue sky, you have to go back to the present moment because it is in that moment that you can get in touch with the blue sky. The beautiful rivers, the beautiful trees, your mommy, your daddy, they are all in the present moment. And if you go back to the present moment, you encounter them. Everything wonderful, everything uh, refreshing, you want to get in touch. They are in the present moment. Therefore, running to the future or getting lost in the past, you miss life. And therefore, breathing in and out is to get back to the present moment where you have an appointment with life. That is why in and out is so important. It makes life possible to you. What you are looking for, like happiness, peace, joy, they are all in the present moment. The pure land of the Buddhist must be found in the present moment. The kingdom of heaven of the uh, Catholics, of the Protestants, should also be found in the present moment. Look at the tree. It's a wonderful thing, a tree. A tree is uh, very beautiful. A tree to me is uh, as beautiful as a cathedral, even more beautiful. And uh, there are times when I stand before a tree with the uh, deepest respect. I look into the tree and I saw the whole cosmos in it. I saw the sunshine in the tree. Can you see the sunshine in the tree? Yeah, because without the sunshine, no tree can grow. I see a cloud in the tree. Can you see? Without a cloud, there can no, be no rain, no tree. I see the earth in the tree. I see everything in the tree. So the tree is where everything in the cosmos come into. And the cosmos reveal itself to me to a tree. Therefore, a tree to me is a cathedral. And I can take refuge in the tree, and I can get nourished by the tree. The tree belongs to the kingdom of God. The tree belongs to the pure land. And I can get in touch with the tree only if I go back to the present moment, because the tree can only be found in the present moment. And that is why in and out is so important. Suppose I practice like this, breathing in, I am aware of my eyes. Breathing out, I smile to my eyes. This is to go back to the present moment in order to discover things that you tend to forget, like your eyes. My eyes make me happy. My eyes are conditions for my happiness. I know that without my eyes, I cannot be happy. I need only to open my eyes in order to see the beautiful blue sky, the beautiful earth, the children, the adults, all kinds of forms, all kinds of colors, because I have eyes. So breathing in, in order to go back to the present moment and to get in touch with my eyes, is a basic practice for happiness. And breathing out, I smile to my eyes. I smile to my eyes because I am happy to have eyes. I need only to open my eyes in order to, to see the beautiful trees and so on. 
let us breathe in and out a few times and become aware of the fact that we have eyes. You might like to touch your eyes if you wish by breathing. So my eyes belong to the kingdom of God, to the pure land. My eyes are conditions for my happiness. I go back to the present moment in order to get in touch with my eyes so that I can be happy. The trees belong to the kingdom of God, to the pure land. And there are millions, millions of things like that inside of me and around me that are wonderful, that I can get in touch with only if I am back in the present moment. You know something? There are people who believe that uh, they can uh, enter the kingdom of God or the pure land after they die. I don't agree with them. I know that uh, you don't have to die in order to go into the kingdom of God. In fact, you have to be alive to do so. You should be alive and you should take one breath in and out. And with one foot, you make a step and you enter the kingdom of God right now. And this is possible with uh, the first exercise, breathing in and breathing out. Because my eyes belong to the kingdom of God, the trees belong to the kingdom of God, and many other things I like that, and therefore if I become aware by breathing in and out, I only need to make one step in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. With some practice, you develop your concentration, and then every time you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, You can do that. You are welcome. The door is wide open. But if you live in forgetfulness, you cannot do that because forgetfulness is the opposite of mindfulness. To live in forgetfulness means to get lost in the past, in the future, to be possessed by anger, hatred, fear, and therefore you are not ready to enter into the kingdom of God. In order to get rid of forgetfulness, you practice breathing in and out, and mindfulness becomes the result of your practice. And with mindfulness, you get in touch with everything that is wonderful, that is refreshing, that is healing in the present moment. So let us invite one sound of the bell and breathe together three times in order to enjoy ourselves, enjoy uh, the kingdom we find ourselves in this very moment. Now we switch to the second exercise, flower fresh. Breathing in, I see myself as a flower. Breathing out, I feel fresh. Humans are born as flowers. When I look at uh, a child, I see her, I see him as a flower, very fresh, very beautiful. Look, our eyes are like flowers. In the sutra, uh, the eyes of the Buddha are described as uh, lotus flowers. Our lips can be a beautiful flower, especially when we smile, we know how to smile. And this is a flower that we can offer to anyone at any time, just breathing in and breathing out and smile, and you have one flower to open. And you know something, your eyes can smile too. So when you look at someone and smile with your eyes, you offer two flowers. And if you smile with your 
mouth, you offer three flowers. <laughs> and your hands are also like flowers. And with my hands I can form a flower, a lotus flower. And when I uh, bow to someone, I say something like this, a flower for you, the Buddha to be. And I bow to him or to her. So my hands um, are flowers capable of uh, making people happy. And when I offer a lotus flower to that person, I offer another flower with my mouth and two other flowers with my eyes. And our feet also can be beautiful like flowers. We are born as flowers, but if we, we, uh, we don't know how to take care of our flowers, our flower may be tired, may wilt. And that is why we should learn how to, uh, to water our flower. Breathing in, I see myself as a flower. That is a practice. That is not a wish. When you breathe in deeply, you make every cell in your body smile like a flower. You can make your eyes smile like a flower. You can make your mouth smile like a flower. You can make your hands smile like flowers. And you can make your body, your whole body smile like a flower. Become fresh again. Become fresh again for your sake, for your own happiness, and for the happiness of those around us. If you are not fresh, if you are crouchy, if you are irritated, and then the people around you cannot be happy. Therefore, practicing becoming a flower again. Practicing breathing in, I see myself as a flower. Breathing out, I feel fresh. The Buddha practiced refreshing himself. And therefore, when we look at him, we see him like a flower. He is described as sitting on a flower. It means that anywhere he sits, he sits with uh, peace, happiness, freshness. And therefore, if they describe the Buddha as sitting on a flower because of that, because he is a flower himself. So when you sit on your cushion, sit in such a way that you become a flower, and suddenly your cushion becomes a lotus flower. And practicing the way of the Buddha, you should sit on a lotus flower and not on burning charcoals. <laughs> if you have too much worries, too much uh, anger in yourself, you cannot sit on a, on a flower. You sit on burning charcoal. You have no peace. As soon as you sit down, you want to run again. And therefore, the lotus is not available. In order for the lotus to be available as a seed to you, practice being a flower. Flower fresh. That is the second exercise. And if you practice like that three or four times, you become fresh and you enjoy that. Now we switch to uh, the, third, uh, the third exercise, which is mountain solid. If you feel agitated, not solid, vulnerable, breakable, and then you practice this in order to get solid again. The solidity, the uh, stability of the body will help bring about the stability of the mind. And therefore, sit in a stable position and practice breathing in and out. You become more stable in your mind. Breathing in, I see myself as a mountain. Breathing out, I feel solid. From time to time, a very strong emotion overwhelms us. That emotion can be anger, or despair, or fear. And when we are overwhelmed by a strong emotion, we feel that we are very vulnerable. We may die. And there are adults, there are children, 
who do not know how to handle their emotions, they suffer so much. They think that they are nothing except their emotions. And sometimes they feel their emotion unbearable. They go and commit suicide. This is uh, too bad. Because uh, we are more than our emotion. We are more solid than we may, may think. And therefore, practicing being solid like a mountain is very helpful. When you look at a tree during a storm, you see that the top of the tree is, uh, is not solid. You can only see the tiny branches and a number of leaves on the top of the tree swaying back and forth under the effect of the wind. You have the impression that the tree is very vulnerable, very fragile. But if you look down a little bit to see the big branches and the trunk of the tree, and also if you see the tree is firmly rooted in the ground, the impression that the tree is uh, vulnerable will vanish. You see that the tree is much more solid than it looked at the top. We, the human body, the human person, is like that too. We have uh, emotions on the top, somewhere here, but we have uh, the trunk down here. Our trunk is somewhere on this level, a little bit below your navel. And with uh, this uh, sitting position, if you bring your attention down to this level and practice breathing in and out and follow the movement of your abdomen, and then you will be able to overcome your emotions very soon. Because you have come down to the trunk of the tree, breathing in, breathing out. I see myself as a mountain, I feel solid. And if you practice like this one time, two times, three times, your emotion will not be able to destroy you anymore. You now know that you are more than your emotions. Therefore, this exercise is very important. We should practice it every day so that when we face a strong emotion, we know what to do in order to handle our emotions. We will not do uh, bad things in despair. Because uh, the human person sometimes has to encounter anger and hatred and pain and despair. And if uh, the person does not know how to handle these kind of emotions, he or she will suffer a lot and he or she may die. Therefore, this exercise is very important. And if you practice every day, it will save your life. Let us practice uh, this exercise for a few times. Breathing in, I see myself as a mountain. Breathing out, I feel solid. Try to sit uh, in a solid way to practice this. You don't have to use all the words. You just retain the word mountain for inhalation and solid for your exhalation. Mountain, solid. And now we practice the next exercise, which is uh, water reflecting. Let us uh, visualize a lake in the highland among mountains. The water in the lake is so still that it reflects truly the blue sky and the mountains. And if you look into the water, you see your face not distorted at all, because the water is calm, is still. If you take a picture of the lake, where you see that the mountain and the sky reflected in it are just the mountain and the sky above. 
So when you practice uh, breathing in, you say, breathing in, I see myself as still water. Means uh, you calm yourself by the breathing. Your breathing can become a wonderful instrument in order to calm yourself. And when you breathe out, you see that in that state of calm and stillness, you reflect things as they are. You do not distort things anymore. When we are not calm, we distort things. We cannot receive the message of other people. You cannot receive the truth from other beings. Suppose uh, the moon, the beautiful moon in the sky, wants to reflect herself in your water, in the water of your pond. But the water of your pond is not calm. How can the full moon reflect herself in you? And therefore, it's not the fault of the, the moon, it's the fault of the water. The refreshing moon of the Buddha is traveling in the sky of utmost emptiness. If the pun of the mind of living beings is stilled, the beautiful moon will reflect itself in it. That is an old poem that uh, I read when I was young. If you are still, and then your perceptions will be correct. And we will be understand what people are trying to tell us. The moon, the mountain, the rivers, the trees, everything is trying to tell us the truth. But because the water of our mind is not still, that is why we are not able to receive the truth from the cosmos. And therefore, we should practice breathing in and out and calm ourselves for true understanding to be possible. Sitting quietly and breathing in and out is a wonderful way to calm yourself and to be still waters. We cannot be really understanding if we do not calm ourselves. Then the next exercise is uh, space free. Breathing in, I see myself as space. And breathing out, I feel free. Space is the symbol of uh, liberty. If you do not have space around you, you cannot move. And therefore, if we want to be happy, we should allow ourselves some space around, and also space inside. If you have so many worries, if you have so many projects, and then there is no space in you in order for you to enjoy your happiness. The refreshing moon of the Buddha is traveling in the sky of utmost emptiness. The Buddha has a lot of space inside and outside. And therefore he can be happy. And those of us who have more space inside and around us are happier than other people. And therefore this practice is to bring space into you and around you. If you want your beloved one to be happy, give her some space around and inside her. If you want to be happy, give yourself some space inside and around. When you arrange flowers, you should know that each flower needs some space around for the flower to radiate its beauty and its freshness. So next time when you arrange flowers, don't use too many flowers. You need only two or three and you give each flower a lot of space. 
human beings are like flowers. They are flowers, and they should be allowed the space inside and outside in order to be happy. So practicing like this is to allow us space inside, space outside, and also to realize that the people around us they also need space to be happy. And space here, you cannot rent. On my way here, I saw a sign on by the street: "Space for rent." <laughs> <laughs> This space can only be obtained by the practice. You practice in order to offer freedom, to offer emptiness to yourself and to others. If you have so many projects, if you are directors of so many companies, you don't have space, how can you be happy? So throw away most of these uh, things in order to have space inside you and around you. I would like to tell you the story of the Buddha and uh, a peasant. One day the Buddha was uh, sitting with uh, his monks, about 30, in the forest, in the wood. They uh, had just uh, finished their lunch when a uh, farmer came by, he asked the monks, did you see my cows passing by here? The Buddha said, what cows? He said, I am the unhappiest person on earth. I have 12 cows. They have all run away. And you know I have uh, two uh, acres of uh, sesame, plant. And this year the insects have eaten up all my crops. I think I'm going to die. How can I survive without my cows? And the Buddha said, gentlemen, we didn't see your cows passing by here. You should look for them in the other direction. And then he, when the person is gone, he turns uh, around and look at his monk smiling and said, you lucky people, you don't have any cow. If you have cows, you suffer like him. So if you have too many cows inside, so many projects, a lot of worries, a lot of anger, a lot of fear, a lot of pressure, release them. Let go of your cows. If you have so many cows around you, cows that you think to be very important for your happiness, and then let them go. This is very important for your freedom, for your happiness. Offer you space. Breathing in, I smile. Breathing out, I release. Smiling, means to bring relaxation to all the muscles on your face. There are about 300 of them on your face. And every time you smile, you relax all these 300 muscles on your face, and your nervous system become relaxed. And smiling here is to smile to, smile to yourself. That is the practice of loving kindness directed to oneself. Breathing in, I smile. Breathing out, I release. Release here means to let go of everything, including our projects, our worries, our tensions, so that we be able to enjoy our presence in the here and now. We become free free from our own sorrow and suffering, from our own projects, from our own tensions. Breathing in, I smile. Nothing is as important as my peace, my joy. I smile to everything. 
even to my suffering, to my difficulties. Breathing out, I release, I let go. This is a practice of freedom. Smile when you breathe in, release when you breathe out. Smile, release several times. Breathing in, I go back to the present moment. Breathing out, I know this is a wonderful moment. The moment when I realize that I'm still alive. I can touch life. Because to be alive is a miracle. To be alive and to know that you are alive is the greatest of all miracles. And if you don't go back to the present moment, you cannot perform that miracle. Breathing in, I establish myself in the present moment. Breathing out, I realize that it is a wonderful moment. In fact, it is the only moment available to me to live. This is a wonderful exercise. Present moment, breathing in. Wonderful moment, breathing out. And if you have some concentration, that exercise will bring you a lot of joy. Present moment, wonderful moment. Dear friends, these exercises could be um, practiced everywhere, at any time. When you sit on a bus, you can practice these exercises. When you are in the kitchen preparing breakfast, you can practice these exercises. You can also practice uh, during uh, walking. If you, you are walking from one building to another building, and you can practice these exercises. Walking meditation is a wonderful way of establishing calm in ourselves and getting nourished by the wonders of life in the present moment. In France, I used to teach children walking meditation with just uh, two words, oui and merci. When they breathe in, they say, oui, oui, yes, yes. Uh, you may like to do like them also. When you breathe in, you make three steps. Yes, yes, yes. I uh, wanted the children to say yes, to learn to say yes to life, to the earth. We, we, and then when they breathe out, they say, merci, merci. They say thanks to the earth, to life. And they enjoy it very much. When we practice walking meditation, we coordinate our breathing with the steps we make. It depends on our lungs that we make uh, three steps or four steps while breathing in or while breathing out. Give our lungs the exact number of steps they want. It may be that breathing in, your lungs want two steps, but while breathing out, your lungs want three steps. So you may say, yes, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So listen to the need of your lungs and give them exactly the number of steps they want. And while you practice walking meditation, focus your attention on the contact between your feet and the ground. 
do not dwell here on the level of your brain. Go down and pay attention on the sole of your feet. And breathe as if you breathe with your feet. Touch the earth with love, with mindfulness, with care, as if you kiss the earth with your feet. It will be very healing. We have done a lot of damage to the earth. Now it's time to go back and say thank you to the earth. Kiss the earth with our feet. And we know what to do and what not to do in order to take care of Mother Earth. The earth will receive healing from us and we will receive the healing from the earth. And if every day you can practice walking meditation one time, two times, you profit a lot from the practice. So the secret is to live deeply each moment of our life. When you see the blue sky, touch it with your mindfulness. When you hold your child, hold her or him in deep mindfulness. All these things happened in the present moment. If you do that, you will not regret later on. If we do not live our moments deeply in mindfulness, everything will become a dream. And that is why when uh, we touch the earth with our feet, touch deeply, when we touch the sky with our uh, eyes, touch deeply, and you know very well that the deepest teaching is with mindfulness. And after breathing in and out and enjoying what is around us, we will resume walking again. Walking mindfully, we combine our steps with our breath. We may do in, 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 out, out, out for a number of times. So do the exercise that you like. In, out, or smile, release. But don't forget the last one. Present moment, present moment. A wonderful moment, a wonderful moment. If you have some concentration, this exercise will bring you a lot of uh, joy, nourishment. And uh, walking like that can generate a lot of uh, energy that will transform us and transform the people around us. The energy of mindfulness is the kind of energy that can heal and transform. Buddha, Bodhisattvas are beings who have that kind of energy. And that is why when they touch something, they can heal, they can transform. Practicing mindfulness, we generate that kind of uh, energy that can touch the suffering and then can touch the wonders of life. When we touch the wonders of life in the present moment, we get nourished by these wonders of life. With mindfulness, I touch the sky and I smile mindfully. I am nourished by the blue sky. With mindfulness, I touch uh, the beautiful vegetation around me and I am nourished by the green vegetation around me. There are many wonders of life within us and around us. And it is very important to practice touching them with our mindfulness in order to get nourished. 
Otherwise, we will die slowly if we only touch uh, the painful things in life. We have the tendency to be forgetful. Forgetfulness is the opposite of mindfulness. We are alive, but we don't know that we are alive. We walk, and we don't know that we are walking. We breathe, and we are not aware that we are breathing. And we live in that state of forgetfulness. And we have created the habit of being forgetful. There are many conditions for happiness within us and around us. But because we are not mindful, we step on them, we ignore them, and we complain that we are very unhappy. Breathing in, I touch my heart. Breathing out, I smile to my heart. And when you do that, you become enlightened. You become aware that you have a heart that still functions normally. It's wonderful to have a heart that can still function normally. I smile to my heart with gratitude. I know that my heart is working day and night in order to keep me alive. It pumps so much blood every day to nourish every cell of my body. I have the chance to sleep during the night to rest, but my heart, as she operates full time, day and night, to keep me alive. And when I touch my heart with that kind of awakening, understanding, love, spring, and that is the outcome of touching, mindful touching, touching the basic conditions of peace, of joy, of happiness within me and around me. It's very important that we practice uh, mindful breathing in our daily life in order to give us an opportunity to go back to the present moment, to the calm and the peace that is already in us, to touch that calm and peace anytime, anywhere. And we learn the new habit of being with peace, being peace. There is an old habit of being carried away by forgetfulness. And practicing mindful breathing, we learn a new habit of being with peace, of being peace, of uh, relaxing, in order for us to touch uh, really the elements of peace inside and outside of us. It's very important to touch peace. Peace is already there to some extent. And if we don't give it a chance, we will lose peace gradually. When you drive, you practice mindfulness of driving. You enjoy your breathing in and out. It is possible. When you stop at a red light, look at the red light and smile. Usually we think of the red light as something preventing us to go there, to
to arrive. So it may get irritated because of the red light. But in this practice, the red light becomes a bell of mindfulness. You look at the red light, you smile, and you breathe in and out, and sit back relaxingly. Breathing in, I calm myself. Breathing out, I smile. And you go back to the present moment. You enjoy that moment. And the red light become a friend, become a, a bell of mindfulness. Something unpleasant become something pleasant. We have the habit energy of uh, wanting to arrive. That is why we want to go as quickly as possible. But according to this practice, we arrive at every moment. Life can be found only in the present moment. Everything that we look for must be found in the present moment. Peace, joy, happiness. Buddha, the kingdom of God, everything should be touched in the present moment. And if we abandon that moment, we abandon everything. What is our final destination? If we abandon the present moment, our final destination may be our death. We don't want to arrive there. We want to go in the direction of life. And life is found in the present moment. Therefore, we have to arrive every moment. And that is what walking meditation is about. In walking meditation, you arrive at every moment. That is why you don't rush. By each step, you touch the peace and the joy in yourself, in life. And life is a walk. We should be able to experience life deeply every step we make. Learning to dwell in the present moment, to touch life deeply in that moment, is our practice. And we should learn to develop that kind of new habit. And by touching what is wonderful and healing that is available in the present moment, could we heal ourselves and heal the world? So driving is also a practice. You drive and you don't forget the present moment. You enjoy driving the present moment. You can practice breathing in, breathing out, smiling, and be with whatever is there in the present moment. When you hear the telephone ringing, practice breathing in and out as if the telephone sound is the voice of the Buddha calling you back to the present moment. That is what we call telephone meditation. You need to convince the people who live with you to practice telephone meditation together. In Plum Village, we always practice uh, telephone meditation. Every time we hear the telephone ringing, we stop thinking, talking, listen deeply to the telephone, and we enjoy our in-breath and our breath. We do that during the first ring and the second, and only when the telephone rings for the third time would we stand up and go to the telephone in walking meditation style, breathing, smiling, make you fresh. And when you pick up the telephone, 
you are fresh and peaceful. That's not only good for you, but good for the person who is calling. If you are the one who makes the call, you might practice uh, too. Touching the telephone, you practice breathing in, calming, breathing out, smiling a few times. There is a gata, a poem for practicing. Words can travel thousands of miles. They can build more understanding and mutual acceptance. I vow that my words will be like flowers. I vow that my words will be like jewels. And that is uh, to make the vow to use loving speech. Loving speech can make many people happy. And after breathing in and out like that, you pick up the telephone and you dial. And when you finish dialing, you listen to the telephone of the other house. And now you know that the other person is breathing in and out, listening to the same sound. And you tell yourself that why you don't do that. So you continue to enjoy breathing in, breathing out. Imagine both of you, the caller and the one who is receiving the telephone, both of you are breathing in and out. That is very beautiful. That is the practice of peace. And after you know that the other person will not pick up the telephone before the third uh, ring, so you have the chance to practice breathing in and out again three more times. And when the other person pick up the telephone, you know that the quality of the conversation must be good. Both of you are fresh because of the breathing and smiling. We have to practice in that way in order to have plenty of chance to practice mindfulness in our daily life, which is sometimes very busy. May each day of your life be a day of mindfulness.